Hi, this is Sandy Baird with uh, our guest, Kurt Maida, here for our monthly show called What's Happening, which is a different take, we hope, on the news and public affairs. Kurt is an attorney in our neighborhood and uh, is an immigration attorney and has special knowledge and scholarly knowledge, I believe, of the world and public affairs. He also was born in India, is that correct? That is correct, Sandy. And came here. I don't know. How old were you when you came I was here? ten months old. Ten was, months. So you don't remember it. No, no. I was born on a cold, cold 90-degree day in January. Nine, in January? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so today we're going to be talking about an economic development uh, in our world, which is an important development, very little covered in the mainstream media, and one that threatens, I believe, to shake at least the ultimate power of the United States economically and also Western Europe primarily, right? That's correct. Okay, yeah. so what is that? What are we talking about? Oh, thanks for having me, Sandy. So I'd Thank like you to start for out. Talking about this. Yeah, I'd like to start out by talking about uh, when we talk about the BRICS nations, let's uh, and that's, establish who we're talking okay, about. Okay, that's, can you spell it first? Yeah, so B, it's B, there's no K in BRICS. It's yeah. uh, B R I C S, right. which stands for Brazil, Russia. India, China, and South Africa. Right. Okay, so places on all the continents, correct? Uh, except Europe. Except Europe, if you don't consider Russia, Russia right. European, right. which I think they would take uh, umbrage with. They might, but they're also Eurasian, as, and they would right. not take umbrage with that because they're well aware of that, right? for right. sure. Yeah. So we have you know, a number of the, the continents of the world represented. Mm -hmm. Brazil and South America. Brazil and South America. Russia. Russia. Uh, Eurasia. Call it, or Europe, right? Yeah. Uh, and China as, uh, and China and India and Asia, and then of course South Africa right. and Africa. Right, correct. Yeah, uh, the only continent, continents not represented are uh, Antarctica, North America, and uh, and uh, Australia. Nothing in North America, correct? That is correct. Right. Yeah, North America has is represented quite well in the G7. Uh, okay, so is this an alternative to the G7? I really think it is, Sandy. Yeah. Uh, it is an well, alternative. Tell me what the G7 is. The G7 are the seven uh, biggest and most advanced economies of the world. Uh, they consist of uh, the United States right. foremost, which is, you know, the hegemonic, hegemonic, you know, unsaid leader of the G7 as well as Canada, our neighbor to the north, mm -hmm. uh, France, Italy, and Germany, and uh, Japan and the UK. Uh -huh. So very Eurocentric. Okay, so these are the advanced capitalist countries and also the most powerful imperial countries as well, wouldn't you say? Uh, in large part, yeah. 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 But it, I think it's largely based on financials. Right. And uh, they just happen to be you know, countries that the United States also enjoys really strong... Uh, uh, defense and political um, ties. 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 That's NATO in a sense, isn't it? Essentially, it is a large part of you know the. NATO. It's the nuclear powers of NATO. Well, it's the nuclear powers, but not Japan, right? Not Japan, but right. I mean, we have the UK, mm -hmm. we have France, we have the United States represented. Right. Uh, so you know, you're talking about the some of the most powerful Canada. countries. Yeah, I don't know. Is Canada nuclear? I'm not even sure. Well, Canada is so dependent on the United States. Yeah. I'm sure that. Right. Yeah, it doesn't but, need to be. Right. So, I mean, so let me just talk a little bit about how BRICS started right. up. Right. So, BRICS was a, it was a, a term that was coined by Goldman Sachs, believe it or not, in the mm -hmm. early, early 2000s in a, in a report on emerging economies. So, this wasn't something where, you know, like the United Nations, where a number of countries got together and said, hey, let's sit down and form an organization and we're going to call it BRICS. It was something that showed up in a report that a, a financial firm in New York named Goldman Sachs prepared and they referred to the, at that point it was only BRIC, there was no South Africa in this group, mm -hmm. and it was just Brazil, Russia, India, and China. And uh, what happened later is uh, the, these four countries decided that were mentioned in this report decided to basically create an investment club uh, where they okay. would try to uh, seek foreign investment in their respective uh, countries and with respect to some of the leading companies and corporations in these countries. Mm -hmm. That's all it was. There was nothing more than that until 
a couple of years later, we're going to say about two, between 2006 and 2009, when uh, there was a little bit of an intergovernmental uh, connection that these countries thought, let's take it to the next step. Uh, Why? I think my personal opinion was uh, there were some objections at that point. There have been objections, really, for the last mm -hmm. five decades. But especially uh, as some of these countries are starting to catch up with the West in terms are of they? GDP. Yeah. In terms of GDP, okay. not necessarily in, in terms of the care of the poorest of the poor in these places. But uh, basically, the, 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 essentially, the international domination that the U.S. dollar has enjoyed for, I would say, seven decades, starting with the, you know, the end of the Second World War. It's, right. it's, been, right. uh, it's been a dominance that has been unchallenged. Right, right. And I think... And there are reasons for that, I would guess, right? Well, absolutely. I yeah. mean, you know, look, the historical reasons, you know, was uh, largely the U.S. homeland was unscathed. In World War II. And, during the Second World right, War exactly, and World War exactly. I. Exactly. And, but, yeah, but right. especially sec the Second World right. War, where, you know, some of the other countries in the uh, G7 uh, were utterly devastated. All of them. Can you name one country that was not devastated? Our friends, a... Canada. That's about uh, it no, because but... they're in North America. Yeah, right. But no, you're absolutely right. Uh, utterly devastated, as well as a couple of countries in BRICS. Right. Uh, Russia, Russia being the, Russia. You know, the biggest right. uh, you know, recipient of uh, incredible, incredible uh, wartime damage and right. casualties. And, what about, uh, what about and China, India? China oh. didn't, you know, uh, China had a difficult time also yep. with Japan, quite yep. difficult. Exactly. And yep. a little bit on the borders of India, mm -hmm. a little bit on the borders of India. So uh, the so United the States was on the victor of World War II really was the United States. It really was, right. yeah, right. on many levels. Right. You know, not only did uh, we, as I said, you know, or we said that, you know, the country was unscathed, right. the U.S. homeland, with the exception of, Pearl Harbor, which was not a state then, exactly uh, at that time in 1930, uh, 1941, of course. But um, the uh, United States was also able to enjoy uh, a recreation of the economic system. Uh, How it, so? It, they had a conference in Bretton Woods right. in New Hampshire right. where some of the top economists of the world, the Western world, were able to sit down and recreate an economic system that they were hoping would somehow be a, a buffer uh, or uh, act as a hedge against another war of, of the scale that World War II was from a financial standpoint, not from a territorial uh, yeah, right. dispute right. Uh, standpoint. So uh, this was a... Uh, this was, was that the hopes, really? That was that. That was one of the hopes of the Bretton Woods Conference. Uh, you know, the other thing was the establishment of the United Nations in New York yes, City. Yes, right, right. After the uh, United Nations Conference took place in San Francisco right. in the mid 1940s, so the United States really had a chance of redesigning the world order mm -hmm. in large part, uh, and it was able to do that because of the fact that it wasn't. Uh, it didn't suffer the uh, the casualties and the damage that the uh, some of the other countries did. All of the other countries. Mostly, yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, so let's you know going back to BRICS, mm -hmm. uh, this domination that for that, seven but decades. But that also brought about the hegemonic position of the U.S. dollar. Correct? Absolutely, yeah, right. absolutely. The which was on the gold standard at that time. Which was on the gold standard. Uh -huh. uh, you know, Roosevelt took it off the gold standard, went back on the gold standard, and then. Uh, you know, President Nixon took it off the gold standard right. during the, uh, the Vietnam, Vietnam War. War. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. So, uh, but through all of this, uh, the dollar has remained uh, the the international exchange currency. Exactly. Yeah, right. and um, we have also, we as in Americans, we have also our government has also taken advantage of that in uh, political situations, international politics, where if we have you know, state actors that we don't deem as uh, good actors, they have suffered. Like? Cuba being an example, mm -hmm. uh, Iran right. being an example. Mm -hmm. uh, these were countries that didn't necessarily play by what we considered the rules. And as a result, you know, they couldn't get funding from the World Bank. They couldn't participate in, uh, you know, uh, programs that the IMF uh, sponsors. And they couldn't participate, uh, specifically Cuba, I don't know about Iran, but in the SWIFT economic system 
SWIFT, mm -hmm. which is basically the system that governs international money transfers, which is absolutely critical for any kind of purchase. Like what? Purchase of petroleum, purchase okay, of so, info. All right, why? Purchase of petroleum, are they those because, trans yeah, because done in dollars? Well, right, they're done mm -hmm. in dollars, and they're done through banks that the United States Controls. has a, a significant amount of control in. Mm -hmm. And if you exclude a country from being able to participate in the SWIFT money transfer system, you're basically telling them to, you know, take a hike, essentially. And that in country, the world economy. In the world economy. Right. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're going to have to try to find out a different way to do things. And so, what do they do? In, off, in often cases, they wind up having to pay cash. Like Cuba. L like, like an individual would pay cash mm -hmm. for a, uh, a particular, you know, consumer item. Mm -hmm. uh, but it makes life quite difficult. Right. Quite difficult to make large purchases, to purchase resources that your country may need, to purchase Because you don't medicines. have dollars, right? Because you don't have dollars. And, you know, taking a bag of cash, you know, or, right. some, or an equivalent is not the way countries work. Mm -hmm. it, you know, so maybe the, may, may the way that drug cartels work, but mm. not, not the way countries work. Uh, so um, as, as, as the concept of BRICS, which, which I mentioned was originally an investment club, uh, continued uh, or grew, developed further, uh, it, they started looking at one another, these countries, as uh, an alternative system to the system a financial system that was largely put together by the United States. At Bretton Woods. Yeah, right? at Bretton Woods yeah. mm -hmm. and through other, you know, uh, intergovernmental treaties, mm -hmm. largely with other Western countries, really. Mm -hmm. You know, the, even the Far East, even Japan at that time was not a, uh, a participant in, in, yeah, it's, in these Yeah, it's uh, important to remember that Japan actually was the enemy. In Japan World was the War enemy II. and J Japan was the occupied power yeah, exactly. after the Second mm -hmm. World War. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some would argue still is. Uh, based on our, you know, bases in Okinawa. Oh, right, right. But uh, so BRICS, you know, uh, they they uh, through the 2010s began in, began entering into uh, treaties and agreements with one another, the member nations, these four countries. Then South Africa joined on in 2011. Uh, Why would South Africa join? Uh, they were considered an emerging economy, mm -hmm. and they expressed interest in joining. Period. They just expressed interest. Ex expressed I mean, they didn't have any particular beef with the United States or anything. No, they didn't. Yeah, no, right. they didn't. And, you know, a few of these countries have, you know, very good relations with the United States. Right. So it's not to, you know, they're not necessarily the black sheep mm -hmm. of the world, you know, and I'm not to put them on the spot, but, you know, it's not, we're not talking about Sudan or... North Korea, or Saudi Arabia. Yeah, well, uh, Saudi Arabia is pretty pretty hooked in, well, because of their petroleum reserves. But we're not talking about Iran, North Korea, Cuba, mm -hmm. and just the you know the uh, the countries that we considered, you know, the outliers. Right. Uh, some of these countries are are pretty involved in the world economy: China mm -hmm. and India, Brazil, and Brazil, of course, mm -hmm. in, on the, in the Western Hemisphere. So a uh, couple of interesting points, you know, when you compare the G7 the countries with the advanced economies, with the BRICS nations. So the BRICS nations uh, consist of 41% of the population of the world. 41%, wow. Yeah, well, three billion. both India and, and China. China. in one organization. Right. right. And then you've got Brazil on one side, and then you've got, you know, Russia that has a significant population mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. uh, where the, uh, so the population over three billion of these three countries, of these, I'm sorry, five countries put together, the G7, to contrast, uh, the most populous nation is the United States, mm -hmm. and it doesn't even crack a billion with with mm. its seven members. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about 26 percent of the land surface land area of the world is wow. uh, is uh, within BRICS countries' borders. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about it's much more representative if you think about it in terms of having. You and know, consumers, too. Right, right. right. Con many more consumers, three times right. the consumers, uh, though not as well off right. as exactly. the G7. Exactly. Uh, but what they started to look at, one, uh, you know, this organization, which was just an investment club initially, was to look at it as an alternative to the G7. To, yeah, okay. To the G7. And to the so, American dollar? To the American dollar, eventually. But, I mean, the other things that they were really interested in you know, distance, distancing themselves from, which were also 
ruled in large part by the United States or controlled, mm -hmm. uh, is the access to uh, international cables uh, for communication. Yeah, oh, for communication yeah. purposes. Mm -hmm. So after the whole Edward so Snowden yes. uh, affair, uh, where you know people found out that the U.S. government, the National Security Agency, was essentially spying on everyone and everything. And he, they, that happened because of Edward Snowden, correct? Snowden's disclosures. Yes, right. Yeah. Now he lives in Russia. Guess where? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. He's, Guess uh, where? Right. He's, right. Not, he's persona non grata here. here. But he's uh, now a Russian citizen. Did you see I that? I understand he is. Yeah, and he became a Russian citizen. He became a Russian citizen. Uh, but as as these countries began learning that you know there was a vast spy network on all communications, they signed a memo and they're working on a submarine mariner uh, cable system for communication and info info technology that is an alternative to the ones established. What will that mean? It will provide a certain amount of privacy uh -huh. to these countries. How will we get on it? I guess we won't be able to, right? Not from this country, no. No, no. so in, a, in, a, in, a, in addition to something like the communications sector, the other things that they want to provide a, uh, an alternative to not just their own countries but to other developing countries is an alternative to the World Bank. Uh -huh. So they have uh -huh. the new development bank that's Which already in what? place. Yeah. It's in China. Uh -huh. And basically their objective is to provide... Uh, infrastructure loans to developing countries. Which China does. Yeah, as yeah. an alternative mm -hmm. to the, the World Bank. And they also established a, uh, cor a corp, not a corporation, but a government corporation called the CRA, which is an alternative to the IMF. Also mm -hmm. very strongly controlled by the United States and Great Britain and France, mm -hmm. as is the World Bank. And, you know, countries that are not considered good state actors are essentially excluded from the development loans and the uh, infrastructure loans that the World Bank and the IMF provide. And can provide. then go to these other banks now, right? Right, right, right. So the new development bank, which is uh, physically situated in Shanghai, it, it was actually created by the BRICS countries through donations, uh, well, not donations, but contributions yes. uh -huh. from the, the other uh, member states. Mm -hmm. And they would provide loans not just to member states, meaning the, you know, the five right. BRICS countries, but to what they call member states of the new development bank. So there are countries like Bangladesh right now, uh -huh. for example, that are uh, Paraguay, that are enjoying financing for infrastructure projects that are fully financed by the new development bank that was created and so by BRICS. And so would they be excluded then from the World Bank? Not necessarily, yeah. but a country like Cuba would be. Yes, right. You know, uh, but can uh, Cuba? Iran, can Cuba use these new banks? The new development bank, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, good. I yeah. guess yeah. they they would have the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, countries like Iran or North Korea mm -hmm. would have the ability to do that. Now, remember, these aren't these aren't defense finance projects. Right. These are projects for infrastructure development that you know actually will you know help ordinary people mm -hmm. that are you know living on the uh, on the streets in the in these countries on the ground mm -hmm. in these countries as well as. Uh, you know, other infrastructure and development projects. Now, so why did the BRICS nations do this? Because I think, they were sick of it? Or because I, they are now developing and are at a point where they can do this? Or both? I think all of the above, Sandy. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think, you know, they can do it now where they couldn't before. Why couldn't I, they? Because they were less developed? That, correct. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really just a matter of, of, of the money. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. China wasn't where it's at now. now. Mm -hmm. You know, India wasn't where it's at now. You know, uh, you know, Russia had a complete restructuring of its after, economy, and after 1991, right, exactly. You know, um, people and, seem to forget that they still seem to think Russia's communist, and of course, right, isn't, right, right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're not talking about 1970, right, R Russia right. anymore. Uh, so they're in a better position to create this alternative mm -hmm. system. You know, there's also a great deal of interest in terms of alternatives to SWIFT. And the dominance of the uh, U.S. dollar, you know, what role these cryptocurrencies will potentially play in the future to get out of the SWIFT international financial transaction system and uh, allow, you know, countries and other non-state actors to poten potentially, you know, participate mm -hmm. uh, in in the world economy, right. which they've largely been excluded exactly. from, from doing. Why? Why is it, why? Because there were. 
certain criteria, you know, uh, political criteria uh -huh. that were okay. uh, placed. You know, if a country wasn't uh, a democracy, a democracy yeah, as we would define define by it. Right. right, right. You know, if a if a country had questionable human rights records, uh, as we define as it. we define right. it. You know, mm -hmm. ignoring anything that happened or happens here or elsewhere in the West, mm -hmm. then those countries, you know, uh, the our government as well as other Western governments were in a position to place restrictions on such countries and to have them adjust their behavior before they could re-enter this, mm -hmm. you know, Or enter, enter. Enter, yeah, yeah enter, right. enter mm -hmm. the system in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that made it very difficult. You know, it was kind of a chicken and the egg thing. You want these, you know, countries to act a certain way, but you make life so difficult for them that, you know, maybe if they were going to change, they wouldn't, they couldn't because mm -hmm. of, you know, the restriction of, of funds. Mm -hmm. So we're essentially hoping for regime change, it often is the case. Right. So what has been the reaction of the West? Any? So, no, no, certainly there has been a reaction to the and West. And by the um, United States. Yeah, I mean, look, when BRICS uh, began uh, entering into these intergovernmental treaties, multilateral treaties with one another to create the new development bank, to create the CRA, to create this, uh, you know, this system of uh, uh, new cable communications uh, without U.S. interference, without uh, interference from the uh, U.S. government, mm -hmm. then uh, the initial thinking on the part of BRICS was that we were going to work, that they were going to work in cooperation with established systems that we have now mm -hmm. already. So uh, the uh, New Development Bank was going to work in conjunction with the uh, IMF, in conjunction with the World Bank, to basically, you know, provide more infrastructure money uh -huh. to the world. Right. You know, but I, I think as time went on, uh, you know, critics, fr largely from the West, began looking at these uh, organizations that were being established by BRICS countries as competitors. Right, exactly. You know, yep. and alternatives to the IMF mm -hmm. based on uh, the, uh, the criteria mm -hmm. that was placed before uh, member nations could potentially get financing for infrastructure de development projects. They were quite different from the criteria that the IMF or the World Bank put forth, mm -hmm. being out of Washington, D.C., of right. course. Right. Uh, so uh, they have been criticized. And now I think in large part uh, they're viewed as, you know, alternatives to the West. And there have been some critiques, which some, you know, some are, I think, just, uh, you know, an expression of animosity. You know, and some of them are, are, are valid critiques mm -hmm. in terms of the viability, the long-term viability of the BRICS nations. Uh, Why? Why aren't they as viable? I well, mean, they're developing nations. They're not... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're referred to as emerging big. economies. Right. 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 I, you know, I think, you know, what's interesting with the G7 nations, the G7 countries are mostly uh, they have the same political systems. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Same form of government. Yep. More or less. More, more or, or less. less. Yeah. yeah right. not, not a whole gr great deal of deviation from, you know, Germany and France and Canada. Right. You know, uh, and uh, they also share uh, the same defense goals. Yes, sure. Which are what? Which are the U.S. goals. Which are part. support of NATO. Support of NATO, absolutely. Uh -huh, right. and, and other uh, geopolitical goals that the United States has. You know, the, um, the control of China. Ha, right. I guess so. Attempted. Yeah, yes, but attempted. Yeah, yeah. And the control of Russia. And the control of Russia. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, make sure that the dollar reigns supreme. I mean, that's the ultimate goal, correct? Of G7, um, right, right. Uh, now, the, cr ahead, some of the critiques of the, uh, I, I think some of the well-founded critiques of the long-term viability of BRICS is uh, these countries all have different forms of government. So? Not yeah. a big deal. Yeah. But there are also uh, different geopolitical goals that they share. So two of the countries that with the largest populations in BRICS, China and India, uh, not right. only not only right. do they have political, different political and economic but systems, all, right. but there are also territorial disputes exactly. that the two countries themselves have yes, because right. they share a border. Right. So uh, and they're often you know even their 
their media are often working against one another. Uh, so, the, you know, there have been questions as to whether or not, you know, how long is, how stable is this framework, this alternative framework to the G7? I don't think that. I and didn't, will they actually right. be able to crack the U.S. dollar's dominance? So these are questions we, we, don't, we don't have answers to. But there are also cracks in the West, too, sure. probably, but they're not as severe. They're not, yeah, the no. fissures aren't as deep. Right. And, and they, At this point, Yeah, not. and they have not, in terms of the member states since 1945, these countries have not been at war against one another. Are, are seen action right. against one another. Right. Well, there haven't been any European wars since then, except Ex right now, right? Right, and in the Balkans. But it yeah, wasn't against true. members of the G7 right. fighting amongst one another, Right. where that is not the case you know, with respect to Brexit. So the division between China and India, though, is relatively deep isn't it? It is quite deep. Yeah. yeah. So d what do you think? As, do you think that ever could be uh, softened or eliminated? Uh, I, I think mean, could they ever really be allies? I, I think uh, no, they could be nominal allies, but mm -hmm. I think their interests are to control Asia. Both. Well, both of them. India too. Absolutely. I mean, to have I, a China role. seems obvious. Right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. just because where China is in the, right. in the development Right. Well, also because the way, scale. in some ways, the way China acts also. Absolutely. But, uh, but it would, you know, it would be sort of like the United States, you know, not having our friendly Canadians to the border, but another country as militarily powerful as the United States you know, with goals mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, as expansive as the United States and both countries being best friends. Well, Likely, tough to imagine, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, in the in the European context, think historically, you know, of uh, Germany and France or Germany and. Well, Britain. they got it together. Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah, but, right. But there were many times that where they didn't. Yes, exactly. And a lot of exactly. people unfortunately died yes. in the process. Right. Right. Speaking of that, so there are there differences militarily between BRICS nations and the G7. So my understanding is the G7, as we mentioned, you know, you said. Uh, the, uns the, uh, the unspoken uh, uh, commonality is they're, you know, they're all supporters of NATO. And if, therefore if not, the war in Ukraine. Right. If not outright members of NATO. Yeah, right. No, they're uh, all, aren't they all members? They, they may be. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I, don't, I don't think any of the seven are not. Uh, in the case of BRICS, as of now, my understanding is there are not any uh, defense treaties right amongst the member states of BRICS. No, they're all fairly independent, aren't they? They are fairly independent. Yeah, I mean they're not very, involved but, in But it's also because, you know, one of the first points you made, Sandy, was you've got South America represented, exactly. you've got Asia represented, right. you've got Africa represented. Uh, with the exception of Japan, uh, you know, you're uh, with the G7, you're talking a pretty, you know, pretty uh, Exclusive he club. Yeah, mm -hmm. homogeneous and Light. yeah, and um, culturally, yeah. right? Culturally, you know, in tune with one another. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. mostly. Right, with the exception of Japan. Right, that's it. Except, but it's always been with the exception of Japan. Right, when, right. When you're talking about the superpowers and the uh, capitalist nations. Sure, sure, absolutely. They've all been the white Western Europeans with the exception of Japan. Yeah, right. an occupied country yes, since the right. Second World War. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, uh, but this division is also showing itself, I believe, between the two economic blocs um, in this present war in Ukraine. That's a good point, Sandy. And yeah. it's hard to know where that's going to go. But if you yeah. think of BRICS yeah. as a, as a quasi-alliance, yeah. it seems that all those countries are either on the side of Russia yeah. or neutral, like India. Yeah, I mean, India's uh, contracted, uh, you know, with, with Russian uh, petroleum producers, right. you know, very cheap oil in a country where oil is usually quite expensive, mm -hmm. India being. Uh, so they've gotten some very sweet contracts with, with, with Russian, you know, oil producers to provide very cheap energy. Mm -hmm. uh, so they've, you know, but and then there were also, a, there was also historical ties between Russia and India too. Always, yeah. ever since the Cold War, correct? Yes, absolutely, since right. the Cold War, since India's independence. Yeah. I just think that's a really interesting, I never really thought about this uh, division in terms of how this war is being viewed yeah. really by most of the world. 
In other words, it's a north-south division, certainly. It seems that way, doesn't it? It certainly it? does seem right, that way. Right, right. It's not highly publicized. No, it's not at all. Media. Nobody wants to think about it. Yeah, because the assumption is that, you know, uh, every everyone is against Russia. Right, but it's and, true. And if there is a country that isn't against Russia, they're really an outlier, you know. Right. Yeah. But in fact, in the end, yeah. All of those countries are either neutral, yeah. and they, they haven't even gone along with sanctions, correct? That is correct. Okay, yeah, so they're part. either neutral or yeah. outright pro-Russia. And, you know, one of the stats I quoted earlier is that's 41% 41 41 of the human population on Earth. So and our, that doesn't even include, you know, the other countries right. that are not member states. All right, so when our right. country talks about this as a... Uh, world war, uh, in a sense, and that most of the world is with us. As I don't, think, just it's a, not I don't think it's an accurate assessment right, of the exactly, situation. I don't exactly. think it's Neither, accurate. I think, is it an accurate assessment more and more that Russia is losing either. There's right. a whole new reassessment about that too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But it's anyway, we only have a walk, but not you know, but not losing either. So we only have a couple of minutes left. It's my understanding that you're going to visit India. I am, yeah. Fairly yeah. soon you're going to another disputed region. Right, Kashmir. right. The objective is to go to Kashmir. Yeah. Wow, so you're going to have a nice report for us next I month. I will, with some pictures of snow leopards. That's okay, the reason well, I'm going, But you're not guys. only going to see snow leopards. Yeah, correct. I'm hoping to see some lions, too. Oh, okay. Right. No people? Right. A couple of people. Okay, In great. India, I think there that's unavoidable. There are a couple people there. Yeah, I think it's unavoidable. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, so thank you very much, and we'll see you next month. Yeah, and thanks thank for having you. me, Sandy. Yeah, thank you.